he is asked to work on a special project, which is, quote, off the grid, called the tomb. And what turns out to be what seems to be a normal job, a routine job, turns into his worst nightmare. The tomb itself, the prison is unlike any we've ever seen before, and obviously he's never seen anything like it before. It's absolutely escape proof, and where it's positioned makes it almost virtually impossible to get out, and he finds out halfway through the film that he has been set up in an impossible situation. And then he befriends the character played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, or vice versa, they befriend each other. And together they work out a plan that's pretty ingenious on how to get out of this impossible situation. For Arnold and I not to physically clash in a film, I think it would be a tremendous disappointment. It seems like I've gone through just about every cinematic character in it, since from Mr. T to Dolph Lundgren to Apollo Creed to Hulk Hogan and, and hundreds of others. This would probably, this is the last one. The, I thought Von Damm was going to be the last one in The Last Expendables, but then there was Arnold. So, we had to give uh, the audience a certain kind of satisfaction to, to really play into our, our uh, let's, let's say, our fan base. So they're expecting fireworks and they get it. I think I have this crazy gene that just likes to push the envelope in a physical fashion that sometimes <laughs> becomes a bit painful, but I believe that's what has worked for me. And when I try to take the easy route, it's never worked out. I've always said, if I don't get injured a few times on a film, it's bad luck. So the more I get injured, usually the better the film. So this one, <laughs> I've taken a few hard hits with those batons and actually uh, <laughs> a Technicolor back to prove it. Jim Caviezel doesn't fall into a stereotype of the warden, per se, where you, you see the, the, the gnawing and the jaw clenching, you know, and the revenge. And I've done a few prison films where the warden was very predictable. He seems to be a man who's just as tortured as we are. I was talking to Jim today. I said, do you realize you're a prisoner, too? What man in his right mind would want to be in the tomb of his own free will? unless he didn't have his own demons. So he brings his set of demons to mingle with our demons, and the result is pretty explosive. The location is so humongous that I, I think it might be one of the largest buildings in the United States. So it plays right into a, a look that is ironic because here we are in the technological epicenter of America. This is space technology, yet you have this primal film where you have two men fighting for their lives in a very untechnical way. So the contrast of technology and just competing brute force makes it very unusual. He has a specific intention on what, how he wants the characters to perform. It isn't some directors become intimidated or say, oh, it's just okay, or they're more interested in the choreography of the shot, the beauty of the shot, the vistas. And I believe that when it gets right down to it, if you don't direct the characters in trying to elicit all the emotions that you want from the scene, the film is just going to become a, a, a hollow shell. He doesn't allow that to happen. He has the specific way of interpreting this movie that is intelligent and exacting, and he doesn't move on until he gets exactly what he wants, which is nice. It's a page-turner where, having read so many scripts, you can pretty much 
see a plot unfolding, and by page 30, you sort of figured it out. By page 30, I didn't know what was going to happen, and then when I got to the middle of the script, I was flabbergasted. I, said, I didn't see that coming. Matter of fact, I used that line in the movie. I should have seen that coming, but I didn't. This film is what is almost required of successful films today, that the audience is so intelligent, they've seen it all, that if you don't give them a, an unusual pairing, I think that the days of the standalone actor are pretty much over. If you don't have the proper ensemble, it's just not going to work. You can't, no man's an island anymore. And secondly, is the uniqueness of the setting. It better be different. I mean, my God, we've seen a thousand prison films, but I've never seen one like this. So therefore, the audience is going to be exposed to a prison, prison genre that we've seen before, but in a sense, you haven't at all. Well, Not this one. I'm suspicious. I don't like them. I don't like anyone uh, in this in this setting because I'm put here against my will and I realize I've been set up. So there's a tremendous amount of suspicion and he all of a sudden wants to befriend me and I realize that he radiates power because everyone in the prison is afraid of him. So I have to make this choice. Do I just blow him off and make a substantial enemy or do I sort of start to play him because he's playing me. So it becomes a chess game, which happens to be Arnold's favorite pastime. So we're playing chess all the time during this film up here. This film is totally original. That's what, why I wanted to be involved in it. And it's extremely hard to come across something that has been treaded upon, new snow new driven snow with no footprints in it. And I said, my God, this thing is, this is going to be a fantastic film.